Hi right, guys, uh, welcome to another video. Um, today we're going to be making some tongue and groove boarding for a, uh, it's like a, a garden gate, but uh, it's the same principle whether you're making a frame legend brace door, gates or anything like that, or just, just match boarding, match board panelling for, uh, for any sort of project. So uh, the focus of the video is, is on the boarding and uh, how I machine the profile for that but uh, we're actually going to be doing it specifically for this gate. So uh, it's a frame legend embrace style gate um, and I'm going to be fitting it in to suit this. So sort of two videos in one, um, but uh, you can take from it what you want. So we'll take a closer look at the gate and how the boarding fits into that. Now, hopefully you can see here, I mean, this gate's only loose. It's not, um, not actually glued up, but uh, ignore this roughness here. If you planed your rails up and it's a bare face rail where the boarding's going, um, you can lose some roughness like this against them boards and have a nice clean face for the outside face that you see. So it's a good technique for, uh, for getting rid of any imperfections in a board. But uh, as you can see here, um, this is the style, so the upright of the door um, is full thickness of the door and then the rail is called a bare faced rail and it runs in to the style less the thickness of the boarding you're going to be putting onto the door. So this is the boarding I'm going to use and uh, as you can see a bit with a clean cut end. It's going to run in like this so everything is flush across the uh, door and uh, the boarding will match the style. Now if you want to be really trick you can make your styles uh, full thickness of your board so before you start the job work your widths out of the door and uh, work it so that it will work out timber size to the um, widths of the uh, board so if you've got say x 125 mil timber you might uh, you might want to say finish the the styles 110 mil and then you could get the 110 mil out in the boarding as well and it would look uniform across the door um, like it was boards all the way through even though the side ones are the bigger styles and then you've got boarding in the middle. So it's worth thinking about the job before you start. Um, you've got to allow when you're working that out so you need to set it out that your boarding you're using to create the uh, match boarding has enough width in the raw material to do a tongue on the style side, one side, and then a tongue on the other side for the boarding. Um, so there'll be one board in each door that has that extra wide board because it's double tongued. So to keep the width, like the sight line width the same, you need a tongue both sides, whereas the rest of the boards will have a tongue on the one side and then a groove on the other side. So just that one board will need to be extra wide. So if you're sort of finishing a the board, so you see 135 mil of width board, um, and you've got seven mil tongue each side. You're going to want another 14 mil, so you need 149 mil finished board to to work with. So um, you've got to be careful of that uh, when you're setting out to make sure it's all going to work. But getting back to the uh, to the video here. What I do with my styles is I put a groove in. So the groove is normally around half the thickness of the board. So these are 18 mil thick, that's a nine mil groove. Um, and then I've done that about eight mil deep. I don't you don't normally go any deeper than that because um, you start losing strength in this piece here. You don't want this, this section to snap off with any tension or knocks in the board. So. Uh, about 8mm deep there and then I do a corresponding 8mm rebate into the boards and uh, that's what basically hides any gaps, so visible gaps down this edge here. If you just did them square you'd, you'd see a sight line through there. Um, the other way of getting around that is to rebate the board, so you'd have a rebate in the style and just sit the board in that rebate. Um, that's okay but then you lose width on the style and it can make the, the door out of proportion um, on the job. So then your boarding becomes wider or has to be made smaller to suit the style and uh, inside doesn't match the outside then. So if you see this boarding from the other side of the gate or door, um, it will look different and won't match the style on the inside because it's rebated. 
So uh, as a best solution, I think um, a groove like this is the best way to do it, especially with a coil where you're not going to get too much movement. So first things first, we'll, uh, we'll work out the widths of this, uh, what the boards need to be and uh, rip them all down. Right, so the overall measurement of the section where the boarding is going, so between the two styles, it's 914 mil. I'm just going to write this down here on the inside of this rail where it won't be seen. So 914 mil. I know from uh, already working out that I'm going to need seven boards to cover this area to keep the proportions similar to the styles. So we're going to divide that figure by seven. But before we do that, I'm going to allow or remove the gap tolerances between the boarding. So where one board meets another, you don't want to butt them up tight or cramp them in tight together. You want a, an allowance there between them for any swelling or shrinkage. So uh, it's more specifically leaving a gap is for sh uh, swelling. Um, with a coil, you're not going to get it, but I think it looks more traditional um, if you have a small gap there with a coil anyway. But definitely something like redwood or hardwood, um, you're going to want uh, at least two, two and a half mil gap between each board at every section. Um, if not more. Um, and also with redwood we're getting a lot of movement you probably want a longer tongue to accommodate seasonal movement so from driest of dry in the summer to full damp, full humidity in the winter you're going to see a lot of movement on a piece of timber boarding but uh, you'd be quite lucky not to get uh, gaps in between the boards and the tongues if the, if the tongues aren't long enough. So. Something to bear in mind when you're working these things out and setting out, but uh, I'm going to have two mil gap at each joint, so seven boards, there's going to be eight gaps, so one for a start with, and then seven joints to follow, so eight gaps at two mil, I'm going to knock 16 mil off of that total measurement, so we're going to come down to 898 millimetres, and I'm going to divide that by the seven, because I want seven boards, so that'll give me, uh, let's work this out, one, two... Uh, five, that's an eight, two, that's a two, so 128.2 mil uh, per board of actual finished board. Then I need to add the tongue onto that, so it's uh, let's go for an eight mil tongue, so 128.2 plus eight mil is 136.2. So my boarding before I've done the tongues or machined anything, the finished PAR size is going to have to be 136.2. Um, now to keep that running true through the door, because I've got these um, these grooves in these styles here, one side of the door will obviously be okay because instead of having a tongue, you put the rebate in at the 8mm, whereas the other side is going to have a tongue this side and then a rebate this side. So it's going to need an extra 8mm allowing on the width to uh, make that up. So one board per door that you're making is going to need to be plus 8mm again. So 144.2mm for one of them with the rest of them running out at 1362 for this particular job. Right, so now I've machined the six boards to the nominal measurement, then I've got the one board that's a bit wider. I'm going to put a face mark on all the boards so I know which face I'm working to. Um, and I'm also going to write on the end one that it's a, uh, the end board. So, um, I'm going to just draw a double line each side so that I know that it's two groups. Um, a tongue and a rebate on that one. And I'm going to find another board that I want to use as the end board. So one with perhaps a imperfection on an edge. I'm going to 
going to use this one. There's a bit of an imperfection here on this edge. And uh, again, mark the face, and then I'm going to write end board on it again. I'm going to put a, uh, a mark there to signify the edge. So I'm going to keep these two separate, make sure I put a groove in this one that's narrower, and put a tongue on the one that's got the extra width for the tongue. then just go through the rest of your boards. You don't have to put a face mac on if you're just doing it in one operation, um, but uh, it's advisable to do so to uh, keep everything running linear with uh, what you've got. If you do have um, imperfections like this one here, it's got a bit of, uh, it's not quite held up to thickness on the end of the board, I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Um, just pay attention to what your door is, so if you've got a brace running 45 degrees through the door, or middle rails, or braces running up through the door anywhere, um, you could sort of orientate that board so that the back edge, um, whether it's got a chunk or a knot or something, could be placed above one of those positions. So uh, if the brace was at 45 and that was in the middle, you're going to want this board somewhere in the middle of the gate so that the brace will hide that imperfection. So it's just uh, small ways that with the same materials you can get a better job uh, just by thinking about it, doing these little, little bits of thought all the way along the process can uh, make a good job, uh, a great job really. So we'll jump on the spindle and uh, put some grooves in everything. Okay, so I've got an adjustable groover here from uh, White Hill Tools. It's actually a three-part groover because it's uh, it's quite thin to a, a decent width. So it goes from four to seven mil. You can see the writing here: four to seven and eight to fourteen mil. So what that means is uh, if you use two of the cutters, so the two narrower cutters. See they're, they're offset, they're like a rebated, very narrow cutter. If you put them two together in this configuration, you can do it any size groove between four and seven mil by adding the 0.1 mil shims. Um, there's different size shims. You've got 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 1 and 3 mil shims to make up your width. Uh, you put them in between the two, two cutter plates and it packs the groover apart to, uh, to give you your groove width. So that will do four to seven mil. And then there's a bit of a jump um, up. So you then if you put the uh, middle cutter in, which is just uh, a single cutter, you couldn't use this on its own, uh, put that in between the two sandwich plates like that. Um, with no shims in at all, that will do an 8mm cut, so you're slightly limited that you can't do a 7 to 8mm variation. You can do it, but all it means is you'll get your two outside cuts to the width you need, but there'll be a tiny bit left in the middle that the two slim cutters won't, uh, won't actually cut, because they're only cut about 3.5mm each. So. Um, the bit left in the middle will have to be taken out with another pass, but if you want to get uh, get the outside width right and then run another pass to just clear that middle bit, you can vary the groove width infinitely with this cutter block. But uh, for the purposes of this video, we want a 6mm groove, so we're going to have to take the middle block out. So 4mm with no spacers in, we're going to want 2mm of spacers to uh, make that 6mm groove. explain why I've chosen 6mm groove but uh, generally with sort of your tongue and groove boarding and panelling um, your groove and tongue thickness like much like a tenon thickness wants to be a third of the thickness of the timber. The reason for that is to, um, to give you the strength in each component so if you've got 6mm on the outside 
six mil tongue and six mil on the inside, whichever direction the force is applied, it's the same thickness throughout that piece. So it should be uh, similar strength. There's not a weak point in the in the joint. Just hang these shims back up. scrap piece of timber so that you can uh, set your groove up on that um, and when you run your boards through for real they're going to be an absolutely perfect place. I like to use a vernier caliper when I'm setting up uh, this type of thing. So there we go we've got a Pretty much bang on 6mm groove, I don't know if you can see that on the screen. And uh, it is 6mm from the edge. So if we run all our faces through at that, we should have a 6mm from the edge, 6mm groove and then 6mm on the back. Okay, so once I've set the um, groove in the timber, take the cutter out and uh, load up the, uh, the rebate blocks to make the tongue. You don't have to use two rebate blocks like I've got. If you've not got two, you can just use the one rebate block and run the timber through twice, um, adjusting it to get the appropriate size tongue. Um, you just get a more consistent result if you use two rebate blocks or a cutter with a set governing width to create that tongue. So I've got a, a spacer here that's 6mm. Um, put that in and try it for a start. I don't think it'll be quite right, but it's worth a go. Be 
careful if you've got a spindle like mine that has a top hat that seats down onto the spindle if you don't put enough spaces between it. If you're removing spaces from an already set up block, just check that that, that top hat isn't uh, seating on the spindle and not clamping the cutters because um, they will rotate on the shaft and uh, either wear it or seize on. Check this measurement across the board. Uh, we wanted 128.2. That's pretty much cock off. So um, you can vary that tongue depth now to get this board thickness to what you wanted. While you've got them rebate cutters in, you can uh, wind them down and do the rebates on the edges of the boards and leave it centre of the A mill. Um, and everything is exactly the same. So the final stage of uh, machining the match board in is to add the 45 degree bevels. Um, on my machine I do that by rebate block and tilt it back to 45 degrees. I then set the height of the cutter just to, so it's just under the tongue and that will do every cut there. So the joy of uh, machining the rebates the same depth as the grooves is you can push all the 45 degree shafts through at the same time with no worries that uh, if all the 6 mil or 8 mil the shaft will be a lot deeper on the 6 mil rebates. So, um, that's why it's key to set out nicely at the start, it just makes the job really easy. So now I've done the grooves, I'll pull this forward and put the appropriate chamfer onto the uh, Edges of the, I'd say I've done the grooves. Edges of the grooves, I've done the tongues already. And that's uh, pretty much it then. Um, it's all the machining done. I just use a uh, two mil glazing packer 
between the joints. They're not quite two mil normally, um, so if you set them perfect two mil, we might just have to give them a little wiggle and uh, give it a, a bit of clearance on each packer. That'll set all your boards to the right width, and uh, then you can just run some lines through in from the edges of your rails and uh, pin the boards in place. But uh, that's the basics of uh, setting up the boarding. You're probably thinking, why don't you buy a cutter set to uh, to machine the boards in just one pass? You could do that if you're doing a lot of one specific size of board. Um, but I'm always changing the width of the board, so these are. 18 mil for a, a double boarded door you can only get away with sort of 12 mil boards each side to get enough insulation in the middle of the door to make it worthwhile so depending on the application i'm doing lots of different thickness boarding so generally end up making the boards to suit the door hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, give us a comment if you've got any questions and don't forget to uh, like and subscribe